Deer, any chance to come off of uh, deer? Hi, Dick Rochford here. 7,000 feet on our way to Tapa intersection and back to Easton from Charlottesville. We're settled in at 70% power, 150 knots true. And uh, it's going to be a little bumpy. So the deal is if we need to slow down, we're going to bring out the speed brakes. So when we get to this cloud, uh, it'll be bumpy. But since the tops are below 10 and there's uh, no water per se, no rain in it, it should be just fine. Famous last words. But if it were at night, we'd have no way of knowing about this cloud. And uh, so we're just going to keep the shiny side up. You can stow those now. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. We have some more, but they're mostly lower. Um, we've got some rain in the area, according to the next ride. The radar is telling us no real problem between here and the airport. We're just going to calibrate this, or correction, uh, adjust the tilt, not calibrate. And uh, everybody asks me, what tilt do you use? So I, I don't know. That's like asking a boy scout on, on a trail at night what tilt he uses on his flashlight. I used to be that boy. And I don't know the tilt then either. Didn't know the tilt then either. What I do know is that when you point down and can see the ground in front of you, it's easy to pick out anything above the ground that might be in your way. And in this case, we do that using two techniques. One is choose the track of the aircraft, which in this case is about five left. I don't know if you can see that little diamond there, that magenta diamond, but that's our track over the ground. And since we're using GPS to hold the course, the course needle is laying right over top of the track. But if we were to switch to heading for just a second and move the course needle, move the course needle out of the way, you'd see a white dashed line under there. The white dashed line represents track over the ground and the diamond is how you see it when you're on a course. In any case, we're about five left of the aircraft nose. Which means that this guy here should be five left. So for demonstration, I'll turn on the bearing pointer, which doesn't really need to be on to do this. And we'll go five left. And then switch to vertical profile, which will allow us to see a slice of sky under or in front of the tr our track over the ground. And there's a little light rain here about uh, five miles away, which is probably what we're flying over right now. It's a little bumpy again. Um, but there you have it. So X-Rad doesn't paint clouds, and radar doesn't paint clouds. Uh, they both paint water, and they paint it in a very different way. They're both radar, but color weather radar is... 186,000 miles per second, real time. Not just a good idea, it's the law. Einstein knew that, he wasn't even a pilot. Next rad is a product that we use that's sent to the aircraft by satellite. And I imagine most of you knew that. And you also knew that it's delayed because of delivery time. The US right now is three minutes old, but I'm here to tell you that's delivery time only not collection and processing time. And if a thunderstorm is moving, or a rain shower is moving 35 knots, it's not going to be where this picture says it is. It's just not. And if so if you're trying to maneuver through stuff like this tactically, you need color weather radar. This is Dick Rochford, fly safely. Train off it.